Hello folks and welcome back to The Meadow, the home of sustainable innovation. We're going to talk today about our solar positioner that we built. As you can see it up here, I get to point it directly into the sun to maximize the amount of solar energy I make. It's more than doubled the amount of solar that I made. In the past I had the solar over there on the trailer. You can see below the windmill there. But as the sun moved for the seasons, I started to lose my power. So, I a system that I could basically move around and get a lot of storage that was available. So the way that this works, and we're going to go through detail about how I designed it and built the frame and there's no drawings or no sketches. I just pulled it out of my head and it took me a couple weeks to build it. But as you can see, for right now, it just has ropes, but it does have an automatic positioner that I need to finish. It took me quite a while to figure out what I did wrong, but this whole thing is a an essay on what didn't work and not giving up until it does work. So you'll see how easy it is. So when the sun is in the middle, move a lot more and we'll explain all that as we go along but right now I'm going to start out with how I built it. See how easy it is? Okay we're gonna switch cameras here so okay now we're gonna talk about how I built it. When I had the solar panels up on the roof I basically decided with 12 panels, I could make two rows of six and it almost came completely square, which worked out good. And so what I did is I took one of the panels down and I went and bought six two by threes and ripped them in half with Jimmy, my $50 table saw. And then I took a dado blade and I lapped everything. You can see these joints here, how they're all lapped and screwed and glued them and basically let it set for a couple days so it became extremely rigid and then I said well how am I going to get it to move so I decided to basically take a two foot four by four and one end I made this cross and this cross basically supports everything and it's bigger it's a two by four ripped in half so it has more support and then there's a six inch lag bolt that I drilled down through everything into the 4x4 and it's full of that nasty Elmer's glue and then down on the bottom I hollowed it out and basically I was sitting on the porch I was thinking about building like a universal joint on a car or a knuckle but I was sitting there on the porch thinking about it and I looked at the ball hitch on my truck and I said, well, why don't I just hollow out the bottom of a 4x4 and let it rotate on a ball? So as you can see, it worked fabulous. I was actually shocked. You can see the, the ball hitch inside there. And then, so after I got all that together and then I made the whole post, I decided to put it here because this is the only place that doesn't get shaded by these trees. And... This post is extremely sturdy. It's set in gravel and it has the big support on that side of it. So that worked out very, very well. And so anyways, when I got it up here, I started looking at it and I put long boards on each corner to keep it stable. And I put it up here and it flipped over three times onto the ground and never dented it or made it weak. So I put it together really strong. So then I had these, said, well, I need supports out to the middle. So I just cut 45 degrees and then I set it in there and I didn't even measure them, but they're all identical. So that gives the middle of it structural support in eight different places. 
and then I went and once I got it up there I said well I bet I can keep that down on top of that ball with the spring so I bought small door springs and they didn't work very well so I went and got the biggest nastiest ones they had and I put them on there at 20 inches and it seemed to work but it would flop around quite a bit harder so I just kept raising them up and I really scared of them you can see they got staples and hooks in them because I'm scared of them because if they come loose they'll blow right through one of them solar panels like nothing so I raised them up and now eventually they're up to 30 inches and they work very good right there um, they keep it to where it can never really go down on the ground even if the positioning tubes were not installed but we'll talk about those in a little bit so I got all that put together and I got it up put there and then I had the courage to put the panels on <laughs> and so I actually pre-drilled everything when it was on the ground with the panel and so it only took like two hours to put all the panels on and once I got it all up there I basically started to think how to position it and I had seen a positioner um, on YouTube for a, a um, one of those domed type um, solar collectors I'm sorry I can't think of the name right now so anyways he used small solar panels as positioners that would drive a motor that would turn the thing and the way that that works is I am going to use one and see you put it to where it's in the shade but as the sun comes over here like this it's going to shine on that and it actually has enough power in that one little panel to run this small motor and gearbox now what I did wrong here is I put that gearbox there where it's just too hard to pull and I'm going to actually go out three feet here and mount it out here so it just pulls straight down because you can see straight down it pulls very easy so you shouldn't really ever have a problem with it um oh that's going to stay there good with it um moving so every time the sun hits that panel it'll kick that little motor which will be out here and it'll pull it down so I had four panels and I was going to get four motors, but I only got two motors and two, and I did get the four panels and they weren't cheap. They took almost two months to come, but they put out half, almost half as much as the big panels do. They're pretty powerful. They're 10 watt. So, um, so anyways, that is the way it's supposed to position. And I still haven't figured that out, but it really hasn't been a hassle because I only move it three, four times a day. I come over here and I have a charge controller here and I have one in the trailer and this one here I basically put it out so I can run this little air compressor and we'll talk about the positioner later but you can see it's floating right now 14.2 is as much is as high as I can get the set point to go but that's only six panels and then I have the other six panels going in to the charge controller that's in the trailer because when I had all 12 of them on the same charge controller it would just float it made so much power you know it was dumping it in the batteries but it could only get through these little charge controllers so fast so i split that up and it made i make more power now than i can use on a good sunny day so i'm actually been running the computer and doing extra things to use up power running a fan um which is really cool now we're going to talk about the pneumatic positioners these basically here I've worked on in three different times I had them at first bolted here so they were like that but they bound and then I put them here inside the T's but they were binding so what I did is I made these little blocks and I drilled down at 45 degrees down into these blocks and then I just made these plates and you see they pucker out a little bit but what they're doing is basically forming themselves now the way that it works is they keep air in these cylinders to create resistance so this thing doesn't flop around in the wind or whatever but i screwed up and i got real cocky i had a couple extra balls and i thought i could get these to seal and these to seal without the proper fittings and i was wrong so i just have to change this out which should only cost maybe 10 or 12 dollars to do each one 
That's the whole problem with all these projects. I just don't have enough money. I'm saving to drill a well and basically living on bologna and cereal and pasta mixes that I make up that last for five days. <laughs> but I'm not complaining. I'm just glad I have the opportunity. So the way that I built these cylinders is basically inside that tube up there is a one inch that goes inside an inch and a quarter and then what i did is i just took my table saw and i cut grooves and you can see how that's right down in there but it's just enough to where it seals i had the other o-ring on there just to demonstrate how far it's down in there and there's two of these and they come down 30 inches so they come down to about here and so what they do is when they have air in them, this thing is extremely rigid and hard to move, except if you go way out on the end. But the wind doesn't bother it, it doesn't move around at all. So I just need to find the money. I'm gonna have to find something to go without or whatever because I'm so tight on money until I get this well drilled and get my sewer hooked up. So anyways, all of the electrical basically, like I said, it goes in and it's um, the three positioner panels now that I don't need, they're also dumping into the batteries. So they go into that distributor. You can put eight in there, but I only have seven in there now. And then the other six panels, I just jumpered them all together. Now everything's grounded, everything meets electrical code. And then all the wires go across on that cable. You can see I tape them and I made a, a really good strain relief up there for them so they're not going to get pulled. And then they go, and I got to get them up in the trees, but right now they're underneath the bark. And I don't drive or walk there that much, but eventually I'm going to rebuild that roof. And that's kind of, I'll do, when I do that, I'll get all these wires up off the ground. Because eventually, where we have, you can see the one windmill, there's going to be five more in these trees. You can see the top of these trees are all dying. So I might as well use them for windmill stands. <laughs> but anyways, um, the brackets out here are basically like they have the, this is the way it really should work. These should be balls rounded. And then these tubes come up and the air goes in. And up there, I call those my stops. Now really, I discovered that you really don't need to go north and south that much you just do a lot of east and west so what i'm concentrating on now is east and west so i put stops in these to limit the amount that they can go north and south now as the season changes in the in the sun falls down in to the hemisphere into the southern hemisphere i will take those out and like shorten this one and lengthen that one to tilt it more that way you know so it's, it goes more to the south so it catches all that good sun and the only real movement it needs to make daily is to go east and west and the way that i mounted this post it's basically just three six inch lag screws and i used a compass in this point and due east so it's the best i could do but anyways it's only 300 watt panels but i did the math and it's putting out about 700 because it's always in the sun. And those new little panels, I haven't done the math on those yet, but they should add another, I would say probably another 100 watts, even though they're only 30 watt panels. Every, if you have them in the sun all day, they're gonna make a lot more power and that's just logical. So anyways, that's about it for this folks. If you have any questions or anything, let me know. Um, please support me on YouTube and Patreon and any other <laughs> social media window twitter and facebook i'm on so but this is one of the neatest things that i've ever built and i use it for inspiration i'll set over here on the porch and just look at it <laughs> and say wow that came out of my head that's pretty cool and we have many many other projects to do we're gonna do a uh, my studio for patreon to kind of introduce everybody to the meadow and what we're doing here to help sustainable innovation so you all take care and please like and subscribe bye bye